thing. And let's talk about this heroin thing. Philadelphia, uh, Wilmington, Baltimore, uh, you find uh, a synthetic uh, type of manufacturing process. They're adding whatever it is they want in it. Uh, you have, uh, of, this is the, the crazy part, uh, the purity. Uh, so there, we used to do analysis through the state police crime lab on price and purity. Now, if someone's uh, using heroin and it's 40% pure, uh, and then they go, say, to Cambridge or Centerville and buy heroin and it's 60% pure, the odds are great that that's, that's going to cause their death in the end, that it would be a surge on the system and overload. The, the, you say to yourself, okay, well, it isn't like buying an aspirin that's regulated by the FDA and everybody knows what's in it and how much is in it. Uh, that's, that's one of the wild cards. The, the other piece that I think is uh, adding to this is that if, um, let's say, a small bag of heroin is the same price as a marijuana cigarette, um, you, you, there are different pressures that are brought to bear to say, well, just try it once. Uh, too late. It's almost like the crack e epidemic in the 80s. You smoke crack one time, you're addicted, you can't get away from it. Uh, the same thing is occurring here, I think, with the heroin thing. The, the inroads that uh, we really make in that come through partnerships, either with the DEA, the FBI, uh, others up and down the shore, even among the sheriff's offices, to say we share a lot of intelligence. We do try to determine who the drug uh, dealers are. Uh, it's, it's seemingly a lucrative trade uh, in, in most drug arrests. Uh, you'll recall seeing stacks of you know, bills and whatever. Uh, there's a lot of misery, a lot of heartache that has, uh, that has occurred as a result. But I think that the, the heroin piece, I think again, is formulating a plan both for, uh, there's some discussion about uh, the use of Narcan, I think Queen Anne's County, uh, the other sheriffs are looking at this as to a medical. What is that, I'm sorry. It, it, it is in, its, in essence a, uh, a, an instant recovery, reversal from a heroin high, uh, almost like a, uh, an EpiPen. Uh, so that you show up, you know, all the symptoms, characteristics, of paraphernalia show that this person's just injected themselves with something, I'm gonna bring them back. Uh, there was a uh, interesting discussion uh, with a drug addict from Baltimore City. The, the most heroin addicts, uh, and we've had them here in a number of arrests, mostly property crimes, indicate that they need between three to four hundred dollars a day just to satisfy their habit. And obviously they're not gainfully employed, uh, so they're, we're, we're seeing these people through most of our other crimes. Uh, not so much robberies, they're, they don't have the courage, but yet they'll come to your house, they'll, they'll steal things out of your shed or whatever it is. And I thought it was pretty cheap now. It is, it's, so, a, it's so about... It's, it's a, so it takes $400? To, to, and how long, would that, how long does that last for? Well, that depends we, too. No, it's, it's probably not gonna last that long. Uh, and that is that the, uh, the, this high that, uh, and it's interesting to talk to people under arrest or heroin addicts, this, this high has to, it, it almost is a sustainable high. I have to get there and stay there, and the, okay. the, the, so it is a, it's, it's a repeated uh, use. Uh, generally, you're not going to find a person with just one needle uh, that they're, they're setting themselves up to say, well, I'm, I'm going to, to stay at this high. Um, the thing with the, uh, the Narcan, or the, the equivalent of this EpiPen, that uh, they, when this is proven to bring them out of this high as it may be, it, it brings, it, it uh, I don't know, it, it deflates the high, I guess is the way to say that. The person usually becomes enraged with uh, EMS or whoever's administered it. You know, I just spent $300 to buy this heroin to get high, and now you've just pulled me back from wherever I came from. Um, it, it's, there's a lot of discussion out there, but, but I think that, uh, I, I guess in totality, um, uh, we have a plan, it's complex, it's involving a lot of resource, which is really the baseline. Uh, in in uh, patient treatment. You need a bed for somebody. Uh, the devastation on the families, uh, incredibly horrible. Um, you know, you have children stealing their, their mother's wedding rings and hawking them for $80 to buy drugs. Um, just, it, it's untold, and I think it almost becomes more of a, um, more of a, a psychotic thing as well. Uh, I have to do this. I'm, I'm driven because I can't control this. It, it's, it's, I think, at a different tier. It's not being uh, an alcoholic or a, um, you know, 
an addict of some some other sort. Uh, it is it is a brain driven craving that um, must be satiated, and I think that with that, um, the degree of desperation that that all all borders all fronts are crossed, uh, selling your soul, selling your blood, selling your dignity, yeah. whatever it takes, yeah. and I think that that's where. Uh, in concert, I, again, inpatient and, and having other resource. Uh, it isn't just arresting people and putting them uh, in jail. It's having a, a solution to it as well. What's the, uh, what's the typical demographic you're dealing with in this county? I mean, is there... <clears throat> well, uh, that's interesting because what we're seeing is um, the demographic, I'd say, is it could run from about the early 20s, 2022, up through 35, 37. And what you've got is a group that if you have an open dialogue, you find, yes, I've, I used prescription pills in high school, uh, I, I, I abused Ritalin, uh, I smoked marijuana, uh, you know, cigarettes and alcohol, you know, that, that wasn't my thing. And they get to a certain point where uh, they, they take this leap. Uh, a lot of that is it's a compromising trust thing. Uh, we just saw the tragedy of a trial uptown uh, with five uh, or uh, four young men with uh, LS, LSD. And I'm thinking, you know, where, where is the tether that pulls you to earth? God, God love and bless them and their families. But I think that you still get to a point to say, y y that you can't get, hmm, it's difficult to lose your self-worth and dignity to be baited into stealing a candy bar at Walmart. Uh, is it a, an initiation? Is it a dare? Is it, did you just, you don't have that restraint? I, I think a lot of that, and it's difficult to speak to it because uh, I don't know what it's like to be an alcoholic or to have a, a, a craving like that, that is a, a, a compromising personal value, and yet say, is it, is it me genetically? Is it my makeup? Am I a bad person? And I think that all those variables fall into this where you have to say, we, we do track the availability of any or all drug. We look at opiates, we look at uh, synthetics, we look at uh, anything down to bath salts uh, or some derivative thereof. We look at synthetic marijuana. Uh, and as we look at both <laughs> availability, we also track source, we track demand, we track uh, peer groups, we, we determine is this a distribution effort, is it organized, is it not structured, is it whimsical, uh, hey, uh, my cousin sent me this from uh, uh, Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's unusual, and I, and I think you go back and you talked about it earlier with demographics. You have some people that may be prone to what's the next step. Uh, and when you get to that point, uh, LSD, you get into uh, ketamine, you get into other drugs that uh, they're forever changing the wiring uh, of your brain. And in many uh, job positions, you are permanently disqualified for admission of use because oh, right. the, the flashbacks and, you know, do I want you flying an airplane when you took LSD when you're 18 now? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's... You're on a, you're on a, if you will, a nuclear scale of drug abuse, and the the variables of how you get there. I think that's that's in a sociological as well as a a police practice of, are we able to untangle the cause and effect? And and that trial is probably prime to look at. Yes. Uh, you talk about pressures for for solutions. Uh, we we deal with that whether it's someone's spouse got a speeding ticket and what do I do with it or I've had an accident and the person has no insurance and there's always there's there's a demand and I think that that pressure is one of uh, trying to do our best at problem solving uh, that comes on many fronts some of the solutions can only come unfortunately through I'd say the wise application of a resource sometimes you talk dollars uh, how do we create a, uh, a a specialized drug unit to deal just with say the heroin problem this happened with crack in the 80s that you take your best people and you pull them together and you give them a new mission. Uh, someone else has to pick up the old mission uh, in the interim. However, that's, that's a remedy that's at the fingertips of somebody that says, uh, yes, uh, how much do you need to create a specialized drug unit? Well, I need two people to work on this full time at least. Uh, and that will, uh, I'll need probably $15,000, $20,000 a year for uh, some of the tools, equipment, um, the safeguards to do drug investigations. And so that may be pretty cheap. I, I dare say some people could spend more at a funeral than they could to sustain a, a, a drug unit for the course of a year. The promise of all that we're doing is in the young people. 
who will replace us, who will be the next sheriffs, the leaders, the mayors, and, and do that. Uh, Talbot County is the probably, I'd say, the last county in the state that still teaches DARE in fifth grade. And we do pre-K, K, first grade for stranger danger, how to cross the street, and all those things. And in fifth grade, we talk about the issues with alcohol, tobacco, drugs, prescriptions, and uh, we reach probably about 2,500, if you count the, the county fairs, probably just over 3,000 kids a year with that message. They're enthused, they write essays, uh, the outreach is there. Uh, this program, I've had many people tell me it's a waste of money, that deputies should be on the road patrolling the communities. We find that uh, if you can save one child in the middle of that, uh, it's making a difference. We find that uh, in this past year we did a pilot, DARE proper, this, this uh, structured format is designed for fifth grade. Last year we did a pilot in the schools for eighth grade. And in this model it's a 40 minute presentation uh, of all things on accountability. That if you're on a school bus and you give a kid in the next seat one of your Ritalin pills, you've distributed a narcotic and this is the fine, you know, and you have to go to trial and blah, blah, blah. If you carry a weapon to school, if you do this, you, and a lot of it is, it is a second tiered thing of account. This is more accountability. You're not going to get the high end security jobs with uh, NSA or Homeland Security if you have uh, goofy things on your record that show that your, your character's been challenged. So we're looking at that again as a promise. Uh, Changing adult behaviors, uh, the court, confinement, uh, probation, ankle bracelets, that's a lot of years of behavior to change. And your promise with a young person, whether it's mentoring, whether it's the Boy Scouts, uh, going to the YMCA, being on a ball team, um, you, you've got to go where you can make most impact.